Yo, 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 what's up? It's me, A, bringing you a different type of content. So today, I'm going to show you how I'm streaming on a budget. Let's go. This is a lengthy video. Links in the description down below for all the hardware and software that I used uh, during the entire process. I also included timestamps just in case you wanted to skip past any of the steps. Here are the five steps I took while streaming on a budget. Number one, assessing my current setup and streaming content. Number two, downloading my OBS and installing it at the same time. Number three, setting up that OBS to assimilate into my current setup. Number four, connecting two PCs or laptops using NDI for free. Then number five, start streaming. Here we go. Step one, assessment. Basically, is taking into account of what you currently have. For me, I have two laptops and a cell phone. Unfortunately, those laptops run on two different OS. One is Mac, the other is Windows. They may look new, but I assure you, they're not. Let's look at the specs. Now my Windows is running at a 2.3 gigahertz Pentium Gold style. Pentium Gold! 4 gigabytes of RAM. While my Mac is running at i5, 2.5 gigahertz, dual core 16 gigabytes but it's eight years old now that i have this in mind i'll try to decide what i'm going to stream for me it's very easy as you can see i love magic the gathering i've been traveling around the world meeting a lot of cool and exciting people trying to trace that pro tour dream however i can't stream paper magic so that's why we'll be streaming digital magic We'll be going with MTGA or Magic the Gathering Arena. Let's look at the minimum specs. Looking at it, it only requires 2GB of RAM, an AMD, Athlon to power the CPU. But there's a catch. It only runs on Windows. If you remember, my Windows is actually just running on 4GB of RAM, Pentium Gold style. Pentium Gold! That would mean that it cannot power my OBS or my streaming platform and the game at the same time. This is where my MacBook comes into play. My MacBook will stream for me while my Windows will play for me. How did I do it? Let's see. Nice. You made it to step two. Now it's time to download OBS. Why OBS? It's the only app that I know that runs between both Windows and Mac. Let's start with Windows. Go to your browser and go to obsproject.com. As you can see, there are three selections here, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Select Windows. It will automatically download the installer. Wait for it, and done. Once download is done, go to your downloads folders or click the lower left icon on the tab. This should pop up your installer. Click Next. Read through if you like, but I'd suggest clicking Next and install. This might take some time, depending on how fast your PC is. For me, it's Pentium Gold. Pentium Gold! That's why, it's taking a little bit of time. And we're done. Click Finish. This should automatically launch your OBS. Now it's time to do the same for Mac. Alright, here we are at my MacBook. So let's go to the OBS website. Same as what we did on Windows. Just that we need to click Mac OS instead. Just make sure that your OS version is up to date. Click it. Should start downloading. Alright, now that download is done, you can check out the downloaded file in your download folder or game as well with Windows. Click the icon to the lower left corner of your browser. Once clicked, a pop up should come up. Something like this. So, this is how Mac installs their application, as you may be familiar with. Click the icon, drag it into the application. For me, I've already installed OBS. So for now, I'm just going to replace it for demonstration purposes. Once that's done, you should be able to see the application in the launchpad. Click it, just to check that it's running. Click open. And similar to Windows, you should be able to see the platform nice 
Awesome! You made it to step number 3. It's time to set up our OBS. Let's start first with Windows. Since this is going to be our gaming laptop, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Open up your Windows, and the first thing that you will see right here is your canvas for future reference. Now let's go to settings. There are only two major options that you should be worried about. Number one is your videos. Let's set up your base canvas resolution. This is the resolution of the canvas that I talked about a while ago. At the same time, we should set up our output scale resolution. This is basically the resolution that your OBS will be sending out of OBS. Very straightforward. From experience, 1 to 80 by 720 is the maximum that my PC can accommodate. So if your specs is the same as mine, I recommend using this. Next, let's look at FPS, which is frames per second. The higher the number, the more frames your computer needs to take into account. I would recommend setting it to 30 instead of 60. 30 is the median. Next, let's go to audio. Since we only want to capture the game sound from this laptop, I recommend disabling all audio except for desktop audio and desktop audio too. Now we're done, we can proceed to the MacBook setup. Alright, it's time to set up your Mac OBS. Let's go to OBS and settings. Now, unlike what we did with Windows, we need to go through most of the options here. Let's start. General. So we can set the language to whichever language you prefer. For me, it's English. Next, we can set the output options right here. There are only four options that I wanted to highlight in this manner. And these are the four tickers around here. The first two pertains to a confirmation box pop up whenever you start or stop streaming. This can help you manage whether or not you really want to start streaming or accidentally press the streaming button and at the same time to end it or accidentally end the <laughs> streaming button. The next one, the third one is basically a confirmation whenever you want to stop recording while your stream is going on just to make sure that you haven't accidentally pressed it. Next and last is the option to whenever you press the streaming key, you actually are recording at the same time. So this will help minimize the errors of you not being able to record your stream, but you, are, you, have, you have been able to stream. That being said, we can now proceed to the stream option. There are only three options here, or three categories. First is the service. The service basically pertains to the platform in which you're going to stream. There are a lot of services out there, namely Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Mixer, and a plethora of all other streaming platforms, but for the purpose of this demonstration, let's go to Twitch. That being said, we can proceed now to server. Each platform or service has a lot of servers around the world. Now, there are ways to optimize this, which I can cover in the next video. However, for the purpose of this demonstration, the assumption is that you and I are new and want to stream fast and efficiently. So, auto is recommended. And lastly, we need a stream key. The stream key is a unique key, unique to your Twitch. It basically links your OBS to your service platform, in this case, Twitch. Let me show you how to get it. Go to Twitch, go to your profile, go to settings, and from there, go to channel and video. On the top corner right here, you would see a primary stream key, which is mask. That is for your benefit. Stream key is unique, so whenever you have disclosed this accidentally, you can actually reset your stream key here. A new set of stream key will be generated for you. For now, let's copy my current stream key right now and paste it in OBS. Once pasted, you're now down. Let's proceed to output. For the purpose of this demonstration again, let's go with simple. There is an advanced option for this, which I will be covering in a different video. For now, your output is subdivided into two major parts, streaming and recording. Streaming would be the broadcasting to Twitch. Recording is recording your video in your desktop or laptop in this case. For my streaming setup, I set it to 1600 kbps. This is just what works best for me. If your setup is the same as mine, please feel free to copy. My encoder is set to X264. If you see this, 
This means that your encoding is done by your CPU and not your GPU. Lastly, I want to point out in recording, you can actually change where your videos are being saved. To me, it's default on move. Let's proceed. Let's go to audio. The general setting for my audio is set to stereo and 44.1. You can go higher, but for me, I would like to put as much less strain in my CPU as possible so that it will be able to stream for me or broadcast for me effectively. Now, if I stream down here, I'd like to disable everything except for my mic. This is just to make sure that my computer doesn't do any unnecessary noise. Just me. Except for your microphone, which you need to set to default for obvious reasons. And lastly, we can go to videos. Now, same as what we had with our windows, our base resolution is set to 1 to 80 by 720. This is just the base. Now, you may notice that my output is actually scaled down to 578. This is just because the strain of encoding in my computer causes me to drop frame. So that's why I just basically reduce the resolution. Reducing the resolution uh, lessens the strain of your computer sending out data. So for me, this works best. Now, if this is also your setup, again, feel free to copy. All right, and then that's it. We're not going to touch anything about hotkeys and advanced definition, which I will be covering on my other video for OBS Advanced. Coolness. You made it to the most exciting part of the video, connecting two laptops using NDI for free, right? NDI is an OBS plugin, so it's rightful that we go to the OBS website. Don't worry, I'll leave the link in the description box below. However, you can also Google NDI it will pop up. All right, NDI is a network device interface. Basically, it enables all our devices, or at least OBS, to send over video in an efficient manner. Let's start. Once you're here, I usually recommend going to the Go to Download uh, click page right here. However, for this instance, uh, version uh, 4 9.1 actually doesn't have the installer. So, what I would do. Let's go to update, scroll down to 4.910, click this, will take you to the release page. These are just instructions on how to use or install the, the file. However, on the bottom part of the assets, you can already see here Windows installer exe. Exe is an executable command in Windows, so you just need to download that. You have successfully downloaded the file. Now let's just do what we did with OBS a while ago. Go to your downloads folder or click the lower left icon in your browser. This will pop up. Let's click next. Next. Before we install, just ensure that your OBS is closed. Click install it. What it's doing right now is putting in all the plugins in the OBS folder. All right, you can read the agreement. It's pretty standard. Or just click next and accept, of course. Next, I have already installed my uh, NDI a while ago, so I'll just click next for now. Next, and install. Once that is done, click finish, and this will prompt your computer to restart. I would suggest restarting right now. Restart complete. Now it's time to see if we're successful. Open your OBS, go to tools, and from there, you should see NDI output settings. Let's do the same format. Right, similar to what we did with Windows, go to the same site, but instead of downloading windows.exe, download macOS.pkg. Once that's done, all you have to do is click, and a pop-up will come up. Just press continue, install, put in your password, install software, Again, remember to close your OBS before doing this. Installation is now successful. You move to bin. You're now good to go. Finally, we can start streaming. But before we do that, we need to prepare our OBS. First, 
Let's head over to our Windows, our gaming laptop. Open up the game. And from there, we need to open up OBS. Now, let me prepare OBS. I need to scoot over. Alright. From there, we need to click Sources and add Game Capture. Now you can name whatever it is that you want to name in this manner. But for me, I'm just going to stick with Game Capture for now. From there, you can select three modes. I would recommend capturing a specific window so you have full control of what window is showing in your OBS. From Windows, select the game that you're running. For me, it's MTGA. Right? Now last, I always like to force scaling so that I don't have to tweak with the resolutions. Remember the output scale resolution that we had right a while ago and the canvas resolution, 1280 by 720. And from there, we're done. Now we can head over to our MacBook and we can finally start streaming. We are now at the last part before we can start streaming. Going to OBS Mac. We need to set up your streaming laptop or streaming scene. Now, that being said, let me move over. First, you have to create or select a scene, then add a source. Click the plus button. From there, go to NDI source. Now, you can select whatever naming convention you want. For me, that's just default to the stack. A few caveats before we go into this. Number one, your gaming laptop should have the OBS running and the NDI installed. Number two, both of those laptops or devices should be connected in the same Wi-Fi connection. That being said, if both of those are fulfilled, you should be able to see them in this manner. Click your source name, you should be able to see the other name's device. In this case, this is my HP laptop, Pentium Gold. Pentium Gold! Yes, sir. Now click it, select it, then click OK. Give it a second, there you have it. Now, once that's being said and done, you can now start gaming in your gaming laptop while broadcasting in your streaming laptop. The only thing left to do is to click start streaming, then click yes. And there you have it. Go get them. There you have it, five steps I took streaming on a budget. Guys, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Also, I stream on Twitch. Feel free to follow me, twitch.tv slash TD Erickson. Till next time, see you soon.